So guys, we got a presentation there? Oh yes, we do. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's David Beckett. I'm a pitch coach, I'm a TEDx speech coach, and I'm here to ensure your ideas have a voice. And I've been doing this with over 260 startups. Between them, they've raised over $65 million. I never say that they did that because of me, not at all. But every single raise starts with a pitch. Every single person that joins your journey, it all starts with a pitch. And that's what I'm here to help you do. We're going to have some practical tools, and you're also going to practice one little bit of your personal pitch. So get ready for that. Now, let me just quickly introduce myself. Yes, this is me in 1992. I suspect before most of you were born. Um, yes, this is in black and white because that tie in 1992, it was not a pretty sight. It actually looked like the result of a bad Friday night. But what you see is the brand Canon. Now, I worked for Canon for 16 years. Big company. And I was extremely lucky. The first weeks that I joined Canon, I worked with a guy called Lance Miller. He'd been advertising for 20 years. He was the kind of guy who could make a mouse look like an elephant. And so he was Mr. Hey Wow, and he forced me to learn how to present. He made me get on stage at every opportunity, even before I had the tools to do it. And then I went on a lot of courses, and in those first weeks, it was really intensive. He somehow instinctively knew it would be great for me to be able to present. Now, I worked there for 16 years, and in that 16-year period, I saw what happened to people who could present well. They were overrated by a grade. The people who couldn't present well, they were underrated by a grade. Now, what that did is it created a big gap between the people who could and couldn't. You could almost say an unfair gap, but I simply saw what a massive impact it made on people's careers, on of course, the salary and responsibility. Most of all, it made a massive difference to their feeling of self-worth, what they actually felt that they were valued by their company. Now, in a big company, you can survive if you can't present well. But if you're a startup, you simply can't survive if you can't pitch, because you have to pitch an incredible number of times to all kinds of people. We'll find out in just a moment how many pitches you make every day. So over these 24 years, you know, many things have changed. Thank God I'm not wearing that green suit anymore. But uh, and hairstyle has changed a little bit. In the words of meatloaf, the cracks on my face, the lines on my face are looking more like cracks. But one thing has never changed. You know, technology has changed. Business has changed. Everything has changed in 24 years except one thing, and that is one person in front of an audience and the impact that that can have. Now, I believe that talented people with great ideas you know, that could change lives, they might never be heard. Have you ever had an idea and nobody listened? It's a horrible feeling. I've had it myself. I don't want anybody to have that feeling. It burns you inside when people don't listen to your idea. So I'm here to ensure that great ideas which need a voice, that your ideas have a voice. And I've decided to give you some practical tools to help you do that. Now, why do we need great pitches? If you're looking to be part of a startup, it's a bit like this kind of moment. You know, probably most of you haven't experienced it. I have. My pitch wasn't great, but she did say yes, so that's all that matters. And, uh, but there's certain t moments in your life that really matter. What you don't want to do is be the person that says, yeah, you know, I just didn't have time to prepare. There's always time to prepare for the important stuff. So make the big pitches your big moments. Put everything aside and go for it. Get to the stage where you're preparing for this two-minute, three-minute pitch. You think, why am I doing so much work for this short pitch? If you do that, you're on the right track. Now, what makes a pitch great? That's what I'm here to share with you. I've got four principles for you and a bunch of tools. Here's the first four principles. First one is communication is what the listener does. It's not about the story I want to tell. The story I want to tell is relevant only if it connects with the listener and with my objective. What do I actually want them to do? You always want them to, to do something as a result of your pitch. So communication is what the listener does. The next point is, it's all about simplicity, clarity, and focus. It's about what you take out of your pitch, not what you put in. I coach people to make one-minute pitches, two-minute pitches, three-minute, five-minute, seven-minute, and no longer than seven minutes. You know, recently at a major big company in the uh, Netherlands, I asked them, what's the average length of presentation in this company? They said, about an hour. 
I said, really? The, you mean people listen for an hour? I, he said, well, I don't say they listen, but we make presentations for an hour. So a lot of companies are completely wasting time. Startups, I notice that even after three or four minutes of a pitch, I'm starting to get edgy. So you have to shrink it right down and get to the essence of the story. Simplicity, clarity, focus. Next thing is about making conscious decisions. Being a professional from the first second in terms of what you're going to say and what you're going to do. So very, from the very first second that you stand in front of your audience, you want to have a sentence that you're going to say. Not, well, yeah, it's nice to be here, and thanks so much, and great opportunity, and really happy that you're all here, and uh, to listen to my story, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've seen a lot of people start pitches that way, but when you start, hi, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is what we're going to cover, let's get into it, you take them straight into the story and tell them, I'm a professional, I'm a person that does my job properly. And don't finish in a kind of, uh, well, that's it. And um, yeah, any questions? Now, you want to finish with a big bang. You know, this is who we are. This is what we'd love you to do. And a th big resounding thank you. So they know when to clap. Because thank you at the end says, I finished. You can clap now. So conscious decisions about what you will say and do from the very first second to the very last. That positions you as a highly professional entrepreneur. And then there's certainty. So I think most people in the room will recognize Johan Krauf. You know, if you watch this man talk about football, this is certainty. You know, he never said a word that he didn't believe in. Now, half of what he said was nonsense, but he did believe it. And so he, he pulled people along with him. You know, and I'm not saying you should put nonsense in your pitches and just do it with certainty. Put great stuff in your pitches, but do it with that kind of certainty. So you stand by every single word that you ever tell in a pitch. Get your story straight and tell it like you mean it because you mean it. So it's certainty and it's about confidence. It's not about you being super confident. It's about them having confidence in you. So generating confidence in the audience comes from a certainty, being sure of what you're telling. Now, I'm going to give you some quick highlights of a model that I use for my workshops. It's called Open 3 Close. It's been tested for the last two years. And it looks like this, which is pretty frightening. But I'm just going to tell you that it's based on script, design, deliver, and a checklist. Get your story straight. Build your slides and your graphics. Get the, the, uh, the body language clear and full of commitment. And make sure that you have a call to action. Finish on time, because nobody does. And practice like hell. Now, by the way, if you want this, you can just have it. It's not on my website, but if you connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter, then I can send it to you directly. You're very welcome. I have one other thing which you can get from me called the Pitch Canvas later. But what I'm going to show you is the quick version of this, just for the scripting part. And to get your story straight, you know, I believe that if you get your story straight, <coughs> the other things will happen almost automatically. So the first thing is, who is your audience? Identify who are they, what are they interested in, what are they driven by. And next is get clear what your objective is. Brainstorm with post-it notes. Get the pitch out of your head. Have a clear opening. Power of three to break things down. And a closing. That's about getting your, script straight, uh, your story straight. So let me just quickly run you through this. And then we're going to do one little exercise to practice one of these things. OK, so who is your audience? Now, I often say, you know, it's not about the, the story you want to tell. It's what you, what you want them to do. So how can you know what you want them to do if you don't know who they are? So what I recommend is that you focus on their needs. What drives them? Are they people interested in money or sustainability? Are they theoretical or are they doers? If you're pitching to engineers, show them under the hood. If you're pitching to marketing people, tell them the outcomes and anything in between. You know, are they young or old? Now, my personal view on young is about 49, which happens to be my age. You might have a different view. But you know, you've met old 20-year-olds and young 70-year-olds. It's about the mentality. Are they progressive? Are they innovative? Or are they more conservative? They're sticking to what they've got, and they want to just improve a bit. So that tunes your story. If you spend one minute writing down these six or seven things about your audience before any pitch, this takes your pitch even further than you can imagine. Just that one minute of thinking who they are. You might think it's obvious, but 90% of people think about their story and not the audience. So if you put yourself in that top 10%, you're already taking a step ahead. 
Next thing is your objective. It might seem obvious what your objective is. People think it is. But quite often I ask, why are you pitching this? What do you want to get out of this? And quite often people say, well, I just want them to support me. So well, what would that look like? Would it be an introduction to a potential customer? Would it be a, a meeting, a follow-up meeting? Would it be, uh, a, be a mentor? What, what do you actually want them to do? Because support is just a mentality, it's a thinking. But action is what you're looking for. So think about what you actually want them to do. Sometimes a startup says, okay, say, what do you want from this three-minute pitch? They say, I want them to invest 500,000 in me. And I say, well, that's fine. You're, you're trying to get on the path there but they're not going to come up to you after this three-minute pitch and say, here's a bag of money. So what would you like them to do? Well, I want a one-hour follow-up meeting. Okay, then tell them that. Tell them that's what you're looking for, so that that's taking you on the path towards your bigger objective. So be clear what you really want them to do as a result of your pitch. Now, the next bit I'm going to spend a little bit of time on. It's called brainstorm with post-it notes. The reason I spend time on this and explaining the pitch canvas is because of course, I think everything that I coach is just brilliant and wonderful, but this, if this, is, this is the one thing that pretty much everybody has said, this is really useful. So if you go away with nothing else except this one thing, get the pitch out of your head and brainstorm with post-it notes, I want to make sure that you get that and that you do it, because if you do, you will dramatically improve the quality of your pitches. Let me explain why. Your mind is a great place for having ideas, not for holding them. Now, if anybody's read the book by David Allen, he's built a multi-million business about productivity, sold millions of books, all based on this idea. He even trademarked this phrase. You are not equipped to organize, none of us are, to organize more than six things in your head. As soon as you get to six items, you have to get them out and write them down and then organize them. <clears throat> now, that works for productivity, but it works for a pitch. You need to get the pitch out of your head. What most people do they think, I've got a pitch, I've got a presentation, let's start making slides. And they try to jam their thoughts straight into the software. And it doesn't work. We're not designed for it. What we are designed for is having a lot of ideas. So get those ideas out on post-it notes. And then organize those post-it notes and create a storyline. Let me show you how. <coughs> so the key is, get the story straight first, then create your visuals. You might think this is a longer process, but I can tell you, if you do it three or four times, it will shrink the amount of time you need for pitching uh, to prepare your pitch by about 40%, guaranteed, or I'll give you your money back. Okay, so here it is, Pitch Canvas. You can download it free at best3minutes.com, and uh, I'm incredibly bad at all the growth hacking things that David mentioned. So you'll sign up, you can always unsubscribe, and you'll probably never hear from me again. You might hear something useful. So. <coughs> If you do sign up, you'll get the updates. Because it's in version 7.7, I'm constantly updating the pitch canvas. Now, it's made up, it's being used by all these organizations and more. Actually, just a second, I'm gonna get some water. Hang on. I'm gonna keep this here just in case. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's being used by all these organizations, and uh, it's been downloaded about 10,000 times. About 40,000 people have access to it. And it's, uh, it's an entrepreneurial storytelling tool that helps you visualize and structure your pitch on one page. Probably you've seen the business model canvas. Actually, there's canvases popping up everywhere. Um, but this is the one for pitching. And I'm going to just run you through it in about one to two sentences per block for 11 blocks. You want one simple statement that everybody can understand about the change you're bringing in the world, describing who it is you're solving it for. Not, we've got an app that does this, but more, these people have got a pain and we solve it and make it easier, cheaper, faster, whatever it is. Next thing, if you want one thing that you have to get absolutely clear in your pitch, it's the pain. If the pain isn't clear, then investors are not interested. And having a product basically has no context unless you've got a problem. So a problem gives a product context. Why does it exist? So make clear what the problem is, and there's a few elements you can focus on. Is that, does that problem exist, yes or no? Is it big? So that's about the market size. Will people pay to have this problem fixed? And have you validated that? These four questions are the first questions that, that investors want to know the answers to. 
How do I know? Because I've interviewed loads of them. And I've asked them a lot, what do you want to hear? And they all say, I want to see the pain. I want to find out what the problem is that they are fixing. Next thing is, of course, the product. With the product, you, be uh, aware, you're not pitching your, business, your product, you're pitching your business and the people who are going to execute against the problem that you've identified. So product is important, but getting them onto the product demo is really critical. So get them onto the demo as quickly as possible so they see, hey, you're people that can execute. You can create stuff. You can build stuff. They're also looking, this is the second thing that investors are really looking for, they want to know what's unique, what's different about you compared to competition. Doesn't mean you have to say competition is terrible and we're brilliant, but it sort of does. You, know, you need to highlight what stuff is out there as an alternative to what you do now, and how are you way better than what is out there. Next thing is customer traction. Is anybody using this thing? Are they already downloading it? Have you got users? Have you got any brands buying? Uh, there is a theory that tra pitches fall into two categories, ones with traction and ones without. The ones with traction are businesses. The ones without are concepts. So you need to identify where you are. And if it's a concept, talk about the, the uh, validation that you've done with potential customers. That's also highly relevant and puts you on the map for investors for the future. Next thing is uh, business model, keep it short. If you make a 10% transaction on every, 10% uh, commission on every transaction, that's all you need to say. Don't tell them too much detail, they, they don't need much detail, but they do need to hear at least one line. And when it comes to investment, if you're making an investment pitch, you want to tell them, have you invested any money yourself? Unfortunately, it's only cash. They don't value time. So if you've spent two years building this, it's, unfortunately, they just want you to live in a cardboard box until you've developed the great product that's going to take over the world and get them 10 times back their money. So it's a bit of an exaggeration, but not much of an exaggeration. But cash, if you put some cash in, tell them that. Have you raised any money already? If yes, great. If no, doesn't matter. Then being clear, how much are you raising now? What will that money be used for? Three big headlines. And where will it take you? This many users. App 2.0, this much money, this much something. Quantify the whole thing. And then the team. It's the third thing that people really want to hear, the investors really want to hear, is the team. They want to know after they've heard the pain and the what's unique. And then they want to know who is the team that's going to execute and make this whole thing happen. And then there's uh, an end statement with a call to action. Wrap it all up with a clear statement. Not a weak ending, but a big bang. You know, this is who we are, this is what we do, this is what we want you to do, thank you. And then there's one more thing, which is why you? Now, why you? And this can turn up at any stage in the pitch. And one thing I should emphasize, by the way, you don't have to start at the top and finish at the bottom. You can mix up the blocks in any shape or form you like. But why you can turn up at any stage. Often, it's in the pain or following on from the team. Why do you care about fixing this problem? If you can connect your passion to your business, that is highly relevant to a, a, an investor. They want to know why you're going to work 24-7 to make this better for your customers. Now, what will it look like? After you've done this, you can, and by the way, the pitch canvas, you can draw it up on a flip chart, brainstorm, and just like any kind of brainstorm, using post-it notes, of course, what would we do without post-it notes? We'd invent them. And uh, get the ideas out of your head, and then take one step back and look and say, what are the big issues? If I got a three minute pitch, what would be the big things that I really want them to remember about our business? Is it about the problem that you've identified and the special way that you solve it? Is it about the traction that you've got? Or is it about the team? Is there something really special about your team? Find what are the big issues and then organize around chapter headings. The rough version, if you go through the pitch canvas, will look something like this. But out of this, following the process, the three-step process on the right-hand side, you might end up with a storyline like this. Some chapter headings with some content. The orange ones are the chapter headings. Now, this is, a, say, a three-minute pitch about pitching. My pitch would be, why is pitching important? That's the first chapter heading. And then some points about it. And then what do you need to make a great pitch? Three things, script, design, deliver. That's the three big things in the middle. Then a quick summary and a call to action. And then finally, a big ending. And that's your storyline, and then you build the content accordingly, and then you build your slides. And the slides almost fall into place. I've seen it again and again. 
If you just do this, it will be such a value for you. Just get the thoughts out of your head, organize them, and then build your graphics. You'll have better pitches for the rest of your working life. Now, what about a three-minute pitch? Quite often, my company is called Best Three Minutes. Anybody got any idea how many words you say and remain understandable in three minutes? Do you want to shout out a number if anybody thinks of something? 500. 500. I hear 500 over here. Anybody think more or less? If you think more than 500, put your hand up. If you think less than 500, put your hand up. Okay, a bit more on the less than 500. Okay, if you think it's less than 400, keep your hand up. If you're less than 300 and remain understandable, put your hand up. Okay, you guys have got a pretty good estimate. Three minutes is 390 words. It's 27 sentences. Now, I've seen it again and again. People have a very different idea of time. One person thinks three minutes is 10 minutes. Another thing, person thinks three minutes is two minutes. Everyone's got a different view. So make sure that you practice against the clock. Give yourself, if you, you're going for a competition and you have a three-minute slot, they will cut you off. So do it in 255. Practice like crazy against the clock and make sure that you can tell your story in those minutes. And if you're going to make a script, now you know. Don't make a script for a three-minute pitch more than 400 words. Okay, so no time to lose. On that note, we're going to do an exercise. The next thing is you need to open your pitch in a strong way. Now, the opening of your pitch is so critical because people, whether they know it or not, are making subconscious judgments about, should I listen to this? Now, there's a whole theory about it. There's a bit of science. It's about the brain. The brain is made up of three parts, and the part that listens to pitches is the most primitive. It's called the crocodile brain. It's about this big, and it sits right at the bottom of your head, at the top of your neck and bottom of your head. And it fil filters everything on survival. Can I mate with this? Can I eat this? Will I be more powerful with this? Can I survive better with this? If you give any indications that you can't help people in any of those four things in the first 20 seconds, unfortunately, audience attention doesn't drop. It checks out. It hits zero. So for example, a nine bullet point agenda slide is an instant guarantee that 95% of the people will switch off to zero attention. Having complexity, having seven or 10 things on a slide will cause people, the crocodile brain to say, whoa, hang on, I can't handle this. I'm checking out. So you want to think about being professional from the first second. One of the ways to tell the crocodile brain this is interesting for you is be professional from the first second. So having a plan of exact sentences you know, you stand up and you've got two or three sentences which you know that you will say in those first 20 seconds. It's also helpful because it's the most stressy part of any pitch. And so this really works for people to reduce their nerves as well, knowing exactly what they're going to say. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice those first 20 seconds that buy attention. This is an action step for you. We have a five-minute exercise. I'm going to give you five minutes. You need to imagine you're pitching yourself. Just yourself. Now, you might choose to say, OK, I'm in a little startup, or I'm in a big startup, or I'm doing something that I love doing. Or you can just talk about you, whatever you like. But imagine you're pitching yourself in a situation. And I want you to write down on anything you've got, whether that's paper, ideally paper. But if you haven't got paper, do it on your phone, uh, do it on your hand, whatever it, whatever it takes. Write down your opening two sentences. I'm going to give you one minute to do that. And then you're going to get up, find somebody else, somebody ideally that you don't know, and just test it out. Say it out loud. OK, we're going to do this for five minutes. And at the end, I'm going to tell you what we've been doing. So here we go. We have five minutes. So I'm going to set the clock going. Please spend one minute to write down what your, what your uh, opening of the pitch would be. OK? You have to do it now. Clock's already running, guys. So write down what your opening pitch would be. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats. Let me just explain what you've been doing here. So this is an exercise that you can do at any stage with any pitch. What you're doing is you're writing something down. So you're thinking it out. You're writing it down, and then you're testing out loud. 
That process will help you dramatically improve your pitch. Because I'm sure there were some people who said something and they thought, hang on a minute, that sounds a bit stupid, right? Because when you write down, you don't think in talking language, you think in reading language. But as soon as you say it out loud, it gains a different life. You see a person, you see reactions, you see something different. So test out your stuff, write it down, think it through, write it down, say it out loud, get feedback, repeat. Second thing is, maybe you say it and it sounds okay, but they're going, uh, and then you find out why. You say, why are you saying, uh, and then they tell you. And then you've got a better way to tell your story. Or finally, you say it out loud, they say, uh-huh, and you know that that's the part that's of your pitch that works. You try that a couple of times, if they keep saying, uh-huh, then you've got it. And do that with all your pitch. Most people put their thoughts straight into the slides and then present it. You want to take your thoughts out, organize them, then make slides, then verbalize, and then present, and then pitch. Now, I'm going to be very quick on these last couple of things. Power of three. The power of three is all about making things simple and focused. And three reasons, surprise, surprise, why the power of three is so good. The threes are in the air. Ready, steady, go. Lights, camera, action. Veni, vidi, vici. How many nephews does Donald Duck have? Not two, not four, he's got three. The three musketeers, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, it's all out there. Second thing is that threes give you a kind of a rhythm. You know, it's Huey, Dewey, and Louie, or quick, quack, and quack. It's this, it's this, and it's that. Most of what, you know, you can tell people, our product is great and it's wonderful, but most of all, it's cost efficient. So think about how you're going to build those threes and break complex things down into threes. But strangely enough, the good thing about three is it's the smallest number with complexity. You don't want to have too much complexity, but breaking things down to threes is enough complexity for the crocodile brain to accept. Giving them four or five, the brain starts going, whoa, I think I got enough here. And then there's the final part, which is closing with power and passion. So as I said, don't finish on a low note, finish on a high note. Be clear on what, who you are, what you do, and what you want those people to do because that makes sure that you finish like a true professional. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also going to finish. So you can contact me through Twitter. It's at best3minutes, at best3minutes. I'd love to uh, get in contact with you also through LinkedIn. Um, you can find me, David Beckett, presentation coach or pitch coach. You'll find me if you search under that. <coughs> you can download the, the pitch canvas at best3minutes.com. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. And do share the pitch canvas. Everybody's allowed to use it. It's completely free. It's under Creative Commons. My vision is that one million people have access to it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's David Beckett. I'm a pitch coach. And I'm here to ensure your ideas have a voice. Thank you.